Even in this video, we are going to study about a gynecology topic called infertility. Before understanding infertility, we need to know what is fertility. Fertility is the ability to conceive a pregnancy. Whereas infertility is defined as failure to conceive. When the woman fails to conceive a pregnancy, Within one or more years of regular unprotected coitus, an emphasis is made here for the years. If it is within uh, 5 months or 6 months, then it's not a problem. It is not considered to be infertile. Within one or more years of regular unprotected coitus, then it is infertility. Types. Infertility is uh, categorized into two types that is primary infertility and secondary infertility. Primary infertility denotes those patients who have never conceived. You can see this girl here she is married and one or more years she have not conceived then it is her primary infertility. Secondary infertility indicates previous pregnancy but failure to conceive subsequently. So, in the first pregnancy, she has received, she has a baby or more, one or more babies. But then subsequently, she is not able to conceive. Then the next baby, her next pregnancy, it is not happening. She is unable to conceive. Then that is her secondary infertility. You can see the couple having a baby already. But then planning for a second baby, the woman is unable to conceive. Then it is secondary infertility. Throughout her life, never conceived primary conceived but subsequently unable to conceive secondary fecundability the two terms are given here fecundability and fecundity so the gynecologist uh, got together and wanted to know the mean average time for a woman to conceive and even after this time if she is unable to conceive they need to set a limit uh, for a period of limit for considering it to be infertile so, there were two terms that is fecundability and fecundity. Fecundability is defined as probability of achieving a pregnancy within one menstrual cycle. In a healthy young couple, it is 20%. So, they got together all the healthy couples and they had a regular unprotected coitus for a period of one month and the probability of these couples out of the 100% only 20% were able to conceive within one menstrual cycle. So within one month only 20% probability is there. So the people have to wait patiently and do not panic that they are infertile if they are only within 6 months or 8 months of their married life. Fecundity, it is the probability of achieving a live birth within single cycle. So here you see, this is only conceiving. Fecundability is only conceiving. Whereas fecundity, the entire pregnancy is completed. They are achieving a single, within a single cycle, they are achieving a live birth that is a healthy baby. So guys, here fecundability and fecundity. You have to remember within one cycle, if they conceive, it is fecundability. So within the first cycle, they conceived and gave a live birth, then it is fecundity. Physiological consideration. So you see, uh, during these physiological processes, infertility is uh, supposed to happen. It will happen. It is natural. Due to an ovulation, Infertility is the rule prior to the puberty and after menopause. You see, before puberty and ovulation. Ovulation does not occur. And after menopause, the ovulation is not happening. Due to an ovulation, infertility will be the rule. It is supposed to happen prior to the puberty and also after the menopause. The menopause, once the woman reaches her 40s and above, there is a permanent cessation of menstruation. But it should be remembered that girl may be pregnant even before menarche and pregnancy is possible within few months of menopause. You see here, we know that the ovulation will occur before the first period of the girl, that is her menarche. Before the menarche, the ovulation is possible. So, if the girl is having sexual intercourse before the menarche, she can get pregnant. 
you have to know that before puberty ovulation occurs but the entire shedding and everything the first menstrual blood comes out only after her puberty but the ovulation can occur before puberty so the ovulation will occur and if the sperm reaches the uh, egg the fusion can occur and she can become pregnant but it should be remembered girl may be pregnant even before menarche and the pregnancy is possible within few months of menopause you see even after the woman reaches uh, her uh, menopause that is uh, cessation of menstruation she she does not reach it suddenly there will be a reduction in her cycles it will be uh, two months apart or six months apart so it is there must be a possibility that pregnancy can occur even within the few months of the menopause now we move to the next the uh, physiological uh, like the condition consideration pregnancy conception is not possible during pregnancy as the pituitary gonadal axis is suppressed by hcg and hence no ovulation we have read in other videos that for the ovulation to occur the pituitary hormones and the gonadotrophin is very important the gonadotrophin will stimulate the pituitary to release the lh and fsh which acts on the ovaries and induce ovulation whereas in pregnancy what happens the human chorionic gonadotrophin that is hcg hormone increases and this increased level of hcg is going to suppress the pituitary gonadal axis and the ovulation does not occur once there is no ovulation no prepared egg so the pregnancy does not occur during pregnancy again the women cannot conceive next lactation infertility is said to be relative during lactation despite the fact that patient is amenorrheic during lactation ovulation and conception can occur here they are saying although the patient will be amenorrheic that is amenorrheic is the absence of menses during lactation but there is a possibility that the conception can occur because ovulation will occur during lactation however in a fully lactating woman who is breastfeeding her baby 5 to 6 times a day and she is spending her 60 minutes out of her 24 hours that is she is spending one whole hour feeding the baby for 5 to 6 minutes then the pregnancy is unlikely up to 10 weeks postpartum so after the delivery the pregnancy is unlikely to occur for 2 and 1/2 months if the mother is completely breastfeeding her baby for more than 5 to 6 times a day and one hour so hope it's clear guys what happens in lactation we know that the patient will be amenorrheic during the lactation but ovulation and conception can occur however you see in a lactating woman who is fully breastfeeding her baby 5 to 6 times one hour the pregnancy is unlikely to occur for 2 and 1/2 months that is 10 weeks postpartum falls in the male it could be the defective spermatogenesis now we are going to discuss in detail about the male infertility what are the causes for the male infertility there could be defective spermatogenesis now you see here spermatogenesis is the process of production of sperms there must be an obstruction of the efferent duct system third it could be a failure to deposit the sperm high in the vagina or there could be some error in the seminal fluid these could be the faults in the male you see here the production of the sperm could be defective or the transport there could be some obstruction in the efferent duct or again here the deposition of the sperm high in the vagina there could be some failure in it or there might be some error in the seminal fluid we are going to discuss in detail about each of these points in the further slides as of now you need to remember the four points that is the sperm production defect in the sperm production that is spermatogenesis there could be some obstruction or there could be the failure to deposit the sperm or the seminal fluid itself might contain some errors in it the causes of infertility in males you see first let us know the normal anatomy of the male reproductive system you see here first uh, the scrotum and testis above the testis there is epididymis 
The epididymis continues upwards in the form of vas deferens. Let me explain you with the help of this. Okay. Okay. You see here, this is the testis. Then this is the epididymis, which is the continuation of it. It goes upwards like this as the form of vas deferens. Then you see there is a prostate gland associated there. Then this is the penis and the urinary bladder, the ureter and the urethra. There is also another thing called Cooper's gland. Hope this is clear. Now we move on. Uh, in this slide, I will explain you about the function of each of the system what it does each of the part of the system what it does in the testis the sperms are going to be produced that is spermatogenesis occur the testis has to be located in a lower temperature than the body's core temperature it, that's the reason the testis will be placed lower in the scrotum because it should be lower than the body's core temperature the sperm production occurs in the testis that is spermatogenesis happens in the testis now you move up on the top of testis, there is epididymis. The motility is gained. The sperms are going to gain their motility in the epididymis. Then continuation of the epididymis, there is vas difference. It will meet the seminal vesicle and form the ejaculatory duct. From the ejaculatory duct, there is a continuation of the penile urethra from which the sperms are like ejaculated out. Now, you see, for the normal functioning of this uh, reproductive system, there is hypothalamus, hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis. As in the females, even in the males, the GnRH is going to act on the pituitary and it will stimulate the pituitary to release the luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. The follicle stimulating hormone is going to act on the Sertoli cells these Sertoli cells are going to support in the production of sperms. That is, they are going to support the process of spermatogenesis. Spermatogenesis, the process of production of sperms is supported by Sertoli cells. Now, you move to the other side. The luteinizing hormone will predominantly act upon the Leydig cells. Acting upon the Leydig cells, the luteinizing hormone is going to secrete testosterone. This is a male hormone testosterone. Hope it is clear. Guys, the anatomy and the hormones involved and the role of each hormone. Testis, production of sperms. Epididymis, the motility is gained. It continues into vast difference. Join with seminal vesicles. Form the ejaculatory duct. From the ejaculatory duct, continues to the penile urethra. Now you see the hypothalamo pituitary gonadal axis here. Hypothalamus will act on the pituitary. It will uh, hypothalamus secretes GnRH gonadotrophin releasing hormone. The GnRH is going to act on the pituitary releasing LH and FSH. This LH will act predominantly on Leydig cells. LL luteinizing hormone from L. It will act on the Leydig cells. They are going to produce testosterone. Follicle stimulating hormone will act on the Sertoli cells. Again, they are going to help in the process of spermatogenesis. Hope this is clear. Causes of male infertility. The important causes of male infertility are hypothalamo pituitary disorders. You see hypothalamic pituitary disorders. I told you the male hypothalamo pituitary gonadal axis is very important for the person to have uh, like to be fertile. So if there is some disorder in the hypothalamic pituitary that is 1 to 2 percent. It is very rare conditions. There is hypothalamic pituitary disorders. The second one is the primary gonadal disorders. So you see there is some problem in the testis, the gonads. It is about 30 to 40 percent. It is because of the gonadal disorders. Disorders of the sperm transport is about 10 to 20 percent. So in the transport, it is 10 to 20 percent. There must be some problem in the transport that is vast, vast difference. The vast difference will help in the transport of the sperms from the epididymis where they are stored into the ejaculated duct 
Now, idiopathic. Unknown causes is 40 to 50 percent. You see, everything is normal, yet we do not know the cause. So, most probably 40 to 50 percent cases of the male infertility, the cause is going to be unknown. Hypothalamic disorders will be? Hypothalamic pituitary disorders is 1 to 2 percent. The primary gonadal disorders are 30 to 40 percent. Disorders of the sperm transport will be 10 to 20 percent and idiopathic in 40 to 50 percent cases. The congenital causes, undescended testis, the hormone secretion remains unaffected but the spermatogenesis is depressed. You see guys, uh, we saw the testis and we already know that the testis needs a body temperature which is slightly lower than the body's core temperature. It should be lower. So what happens, the testis is going to be descended down into the scrotum. It is supposed to be there outside the body so that the temperature is low. Whereas in undescended testis, the hormone secretion will remain unaffected as the hypothalamo-pituitary uh, uh, hypothalamo disorder is not found. So the hypothalamus and pituitary is normal. So what happens? The hormone secretion is going to remain unaffected. But the spermatogenesis is depressed. The testis, the production of sperms happen. So since they are undescended, in, because of uh, the increased temperature, the production of the sperm is going to be affected. The vast difference is absent bilateral in about 1 to 2 percent of infertile women, sorry, infertile males. So you see here in the, the vast difference, which is very important uh, to transfer the sperms, bilaterally it is going to be absent in 1 to 2 percent of infertile males. Hope this is clear. What happens in undescended testis? In undescended testis, the hormone secretion will be normal, but the process of formation of sperms will be affected. And the vast difference is uh, absent bilaterally. It is absent in about 1 to 2 percent infertile males. Now you see the congenitally other cause is Cartagena's syndrome. Cartagena's syndrome is an autosomal disease. In this, there is a loss of ciliary function and sperm motility. So, the motility of the sperm is affected here. The ciliary function is lost and the sperm motility is affected in Cartagena's syndrome. Hypospadias. Hypospadias causes the failure to deposit the sperm high in the vagina. So, guys, you see hypospadiasis, it is a condition where the opening of the penis will be underneath rather than the tip. So, normally the opening will be at the tip of the penis, but when it starts in uh, the underneath the penis or some way other, other than the tip, then it results in hypospadias, a condition called hypospadiasis, which causes the failure to deposit the sperm high in the vagina. These are the congenital causes, an irregular opening, hypospadiasis, or there must be a loss in the ciliary function. There must be some defect in the epididymis. The motility is lost. That is Cartagena syndrome. Then there could be an undescended testis. Testis remains either in the inguinal canal or it will be in the abdominal, inguinal area or abdominal area. It does not descend down into the scrotum. Then there could be infertility. These are the congenital. By birth, these three causes could be there. Now you see the thermal factor. The scrotal temperature is raised in conditions such as varicose seal. Now you see varicose seal, what happens here, there is an enlargement of the veins within the scrotum. You see the normal veins and the enlarged veins. Because of the enlarged veins, it is going to increase the temperature of the scrotum. The varicose seal probably will interfere with the cooling mechanism and also it will increase the catecholamine concentration. Guys, in varicocele, there will be low sperm production and the quality of the sperm is also going to be decreased, leading to infertility in males. Hope this is clear. What happens in thermal factor? You have to write that in the scrotum, the temperature is supposed to be low. But uh, because of varicocele, there is enlargement of the veins that is going to interfere with the cooling mechanism and it is also going to increase the catecholamine concentration. Infection, mumps or chitis after puberty may permanently damage the spermatogenesis. You see, 
the condition called as mumps or chitis this infection is going to damage the spermatogenesis the quality of the sperm is adversely affected by chronic systemic illness like bronchiectasis bacterial or viral infection of seminal vesicle or prostate depresses the sperm count so during the history if the male is infertile we need to ask if he had some chronic systemic illnesses such as bronchiectasis the bacterial or the viral infection which is affecting the seminal vesicle or the prostate all these condition is going to depress the sperm count so if the person is suffering from these infections this can also lead him to infertility t mycoplasma or chlamydial trachomatis you see here the t mycoplasma that is urea plasma it is a sexually transmitted diseases the chlamydial trachomatis which these uh, in uh, these uh, organisms are going to cause a sexually transmitted infection this is also going to be a cause for infertility these infections so you have learnt about mumps or chitis then the chronic systemic illness such as bronchiectasis bacterial viral infections of the seminal vesicles even the tuberculosis can also affect the fertility prostate how does it affect by depressing the sperm count even the t mycoplasma and chlamydial trachomatis infection can also be implicated in infertility now you can see here the normal epididymis the inflamed epididymis that is inflamed testicles and epididymis in mumps or chitis what happens there is an inflammation of the epididymis and the testis now let us move on to the general factors which are rendering a person to be infertile the chronic debilitating diseases like we read in the previous slide the chronic from years long the male is suffering from it debilitating which is making the person weak chronic debilitating diseases such as bronchiectasis that is the infections of the viral or bacterial infections which are affecting the seminal vesicles which are affecting the prostate those infections and the malnutrition or heavy smoking will reduce the spermatogenesis you see the smoking also while taking the history we need to ask if the person is smoking because the smoking will cause a low sperm count alcohol will inhibit the spermatogenesis that is production of sperms either by suppressing the leydig cell synthesis of testosterone or possibly by suppressing the gonadotrophin level guys we i already told you in the previous slide what uh, how the lh is going to act predominantly upon the leydig cells and how it is helping in the production of the male hormone testosterone so when a person is a chronic alcoholic what happens the spermatogenesis is going to be affected how by suppressing the leydig cells synthesis of testosterone or it will suppress the gonadotrophin levels in the brain so these are the general factors the chronic debilitating diseases malnutrition heavy smoking these are going to reduce the sperm production alcohol will also inhibit the spermatogenesis by suppressing the leydig cell synthesis of testosterone or by suppressing the gonadotrophin level now you see there are three conditions that is pre testicular testicular and seminal duct obstruction that is post testicular the causes it could be pre testicular which means the infertility is issue whatever the issue is for the male to be infertile it is outside the reproductive system so the testicles are not involved it is pre testicular which means it is outside the testicles it is outside the reproductive system now you see in the testicular it is relating to testicles or it is predominantly affecting the testicles post the testicular there must be some obstruction in the flow of the sperms so let us look into the detail what are the pre testicular testicular and post testicular conditions the common causes of male infertility the pre testicular that is outside the testicles outside the reproductive system it could be either in the brain the endocrines the hormone or the drugs genetic psychosexual they are endocrine in endocrine there is gonadotrophin deficiency 
we saw the gonadotrophic hypothalamus uh, gn uh, like uh, the axis is supposed to be normal hypothalamo pituitary gonadal axis is very uh, it should it should be in a normal condition for the person to be fertile now what happens if there is some gonadotrophin deficiency or the person is very obese there is some thyroid dysfunction or hyperprolactinemia the normal thyroid levels and the prolactin levels are also very necessary for the normal production of the sperms now here when there is some thyroid dysfunction like hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism it is also going to affect the fertility hyperprolactinemia the high levels of prolactin are going to affect the spermatogenesis you see in endocrine the gonadotrophin deficiency obesity thyroid dysfunction and hyperprolactinemia you see the psychosexual factors that is erectile dysfunction or impotency that is psychosexual factors there could be impotency impotence is or the inability to have an erection that is impotency then you move on to the drugs like anti hypertensive drugs and anti psychotics genetic 47 xxy you see 47 xxy it is kleinfelter syndrome where the male is having an extra x chromosome in this condition the testosterone levels are going to be very low as a result the spermatogenesis will be affected single gene mutations so if there are single gene mutation that can also make the person infertile so these are the pre testicular causes you saw outside the testicles it could be either endocrinal psychosexual drugs and genetic endocrinal we saw gonadotrophin deficiency thyroid dysfunction hyperprolactinemia obesity psychosexual erectile dysfunction and impotence almost the same meaning drugs anti hypertensive drugs and anti psychotic drugs genetic hypertensive psychotic both are anti hypertensive anti psychotic genetic kleinfelter syndrome 47 xxy y chromosome deletion and single gene mutation now we move on to the testicular causes what are the problems in the testis it could be an immotile cilia cartagena syndrome we saw already that in cartagena syndrome the mobility or the cilia function is lost loss of ciliary function and the mob mobility of the cilia is lost so what happens immotile cilia uh, also in known as cartagena syndrome cryptorchidism cryptorchidism guys this is a condition where the testis is not ascending it is not descending from the abdomen into the scrotum it is supposed to be present in the scrotum so the undescended testis it is known as cryptorchidism the infection such as mumps and orchitis toxins drugs smoking radiation varicocele so these conditions these testicular causes we have already discussed in detail so just uh, you need to mention here immotile cilia cartagena syndrome cryptorchidism the infection mumps orchitis the toxins that is drugs smoking radiation varicocele immunologic sertoli cell only syndrome immunologic guys are uh, in the chronic debilitating diseases where the immunity of the person is affected so the, which is reducing the sperm count immunologic conditions sertoli cell only syndrome primary testicular failure oligoasthenotetrazoospermia you can remember it as oats o a t s oligoasthenotetrazoospermia in oligoasthenotetrazoospermia there will be low sperm count the sperm motility will also be abnormal and the morphology is also affected it is a combination of three things the count the motility and the morphology all the three things are affected here in oats that is oligoasthenotetrazoospermia so hope the testicular causes are clear what happens guys in testicles either they could be immotile cilia cryptorchidism infections toxins varicocele immunologic sertoli cell only syndrome oats primary testicular failure now we move on to the post testicular uh, causes the post testicular causes are also known as the obstructional causes 
they are congenital there is absence of vast difference in cystic fibrosis in cystic fibrosis uh, the cftr gene mutation happens resulting in cbavd that is congenital bilateral absence of vast difference you see what happens in cystic fibrosis the gene that is cf tr gene is going to be affected there is mutation of the gene happening resulting in congenital bilateral absence from birth there is an absence of vast difference bilaterally then young's syndrome young's syndrome there is a uh, anosmia and along with that there is azoospermia there is a functional blockage of the sperm in the epididymis in young syndrome what happens there is azoospermia acquired infections such as tuberculosis gonorrhea these can bring in an obstruction surgical such as her uh, herniorraphy and vasectomy guys what happens is herniorraphy during the herniorraphy there is a uh, hernia repair surgery what happens there could be an injury to the vas deferens during the inguinal canal repair during the inguinal uh, hernial repair what happens they, they cause an injury to the vas deferens so uh, there is a uh, obstruction during herniorraphy and vasectomy other causes there could be an ejaculatory failure retrograde ejaculation hypospadiasis we saw this already hypospadiasis what happens the opening which is supposed to be in the tip is found underneath in the penis bladder neck surgery these conditions are post testicular these will result in the obstruction of the sperm transport there is an obstruction of the efferent duct the congenital could be absence congenitally absence of vas deferens in cystic fibrosis then young syndrome there is azoospermia acquired infection like tb gonorrhea surgical herniorraphy and vasectomy so you see congenital acquired surgical congenital there are two conditions acquired to surgical to others are ejaculatory failure the failure to ejaculate retrograde ejaculation the ejaculation is happening in the opposite direction it is going upwards rather than coming out from the penile urethra hypospadiasis the opening is defective so the deposition of the sperm is not happening high up in the vagina resulting in infertility or there could be a bladder neck surgery whenever there is a bladder neck surgery the vas deferens could be affected there could be an obstruction of the efferent duct hope this is clear guys pre testicular testicular and post testicular causes in pre testicular endocrine psychosocial psychosexual drugs and genetic in testicular cartilaginous syndrome infection toxins immunologic post testicular there is obstruction there could be congenital cause acquired cause surgical others could be the failure to ejaculate retrograde ejaculation hypospadias and bladder neck surgery common causes of male infertility endocrine the testicular failure due to gonadotrophin deficiency kalman syndrome is rare so you see here in kalman's syndrome what happens there is an underdevelopment of the gonadotrophin releasing hormone production there is deficiency of gnrh the gnrh is affected but the it is a rare condition the fsh level is raised in idiopathic testicular failure with the germ cell hypoplasia sertoli cell only syndrome we also saw certainly certainly cell only syndrome what happens in this the fsh level is raised because of an unknown testicular failure with the germ cell hypoplasia and along with that there is hypoplasia of the germ cells in certainly cell only syndrome fsh is raised there is testicular failure and the germ cell hypoplasia happens hyperprolactinemia is also associated with impotence now you see these were the endocrine causes the kalman syndrome certainly cell only syndrome and hyperprolactinemia you need to know in kalman syndrome the gnrh deficiency there is gnrh deficiency in certainly cell only syndrome 
the FSH level is raised, there is germ cell hypoplasia and testicular failure. There is hyperprolacticnemia which is also making the person impotent. Now we move on to the genetic causes. Common chromosomal abnormality in azoospermia male is Kleinfelter syndrome. Guys, we have read it in the tabular form. Now we are discussing in detail about each. It could be a very good revision. You can memorize it well here. In genetic, what happens? We have already read about Kleinfelter syndrome that is 47XXY. Second, we saw the gene deletions. There is a detection in the long arm of Y chromosome. For patients with the severe oligospermia and azoospermia, what happens here? Whenever there is a deletion of the long arm of Y chromosome, it will make the patient to have a severe oligospermia and azoospermia. The common causes were iatrogenic, that is radiation, psychotic, toxic drugs, semitidine, beta blockers, antihypertensive drugs, anticonvulsant and antidepressant drugs. They are likely to hinder the, hinder the spermatogenesis. So they are affecting the spermatogenesis. What are those? The radiation, cytotoxic drugs, beta blockers, antihypertensive drugs, anticonvulsant and antidepressants. Antihypertensive antidepressant, anticonvulsant. Now we move on to the immunological factors. The antibodies against the spermatozoal antigens may be the cause of infertility. So the immunological factors you see the antibodies will be produced against the antigens which are present on the surface of the spermatozoa. These will be uh, like killing the spermatozoa which will result in the clumping of the spermatozoa after ejaculation. What happens guys in immunologic factors? The antibody production happens against the spermatozoal surface antigens. Obstruction of the efferent duct. The efferent duct may be obstructed by infections like tuberc tubercular, gonococcal or by surgical trauma herniriorraphy following vasectomy. We have already discussed this in infections like TB, gonococci or the surgical trauma that is uh, during the process of hernial repair, herniorraphy following, herniorraphy following the vasectomy. In the young syndrome, there is epididymal obstruction and bron bronchiectasis. We read about the young syndrome. What happens there? There is epididymal obstruction and also bronchiectasis. Failure to deposit the sperm high in the vagina, the coital problems will be the erectile dysfunction, ejaculatory defect, the premature, retrograde or absence of ejaculation. The ejaculatory defect, it could be a premature ejaculation or it could be a retrograde opposite flow ejaculation or there could be a complete absence of ejaculation or the hypospadiasis like what we have discussed it could the opening could be either distal mid shaft proximal underneath that is instead of the tip sperm abnormality loss of sperm motility asthenozoospermia abnormal sperm morphology there could be a rounded head sperm Tetrazoospermia are the important factors. You see here the normal uh, shape of the head will be oval. The sperm will have a oval head with a long tail. It is the normal morphology. But when the, uh, the head of the sperm is round headed or there is a globular head and tetrazoospermia when the sperm in the male semen is not well formed or the defective formation that is tetrazoospermia defective formation in the morphology these are the important factors for the sperm abnormality resulting in infertility either the motility is lost or the morphology is defective errors in the seminal fluid fluid unusually high or low volume of ejaculation so we have a certain uh, like uh, ml if the volume of ejaculation is less than that then it is an error in the seminal fluid it is supposed to be 2 ml or more the at least 1.5 ml is supposed to be there but when the volume is less than 1.5 ml or 2 it is going to be an error in the seminal fluid low fructose content 
high prostaglandin content and due viscosity so you see here the increased prostaglandins will inhibit the testicular dna synthesis they will interfere with the dna synthesis that is the production of sperms happen in the testicles they will interfere in the dna synthesis and they will make the person infertile undue viscosity these could be the errors in the seminal fluid either there is a unusually high or low volume of uh, ejaculation or the fructose content is less the prostaglandin levels are increasing which is interfering with the dna synthesis happening in the uh, testicles and also the undue viscosity with this we come to an end of the causes of male infertility in the next video we'll discuss about the female causes of infertility hope the male causes are clear if you have any doubts put it in the comment section i would try to solve them if you like my video Hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you.